We're on lesson 6 of chapter 9, which is the surface area of prisms and cylinders. The word to learn today is surface area, which is the sum of the areas of all surfaces on a figure. For example, we have a prism here that has been unfolded. These darker spaces are the bases, and then these are the four faces of that prism. The surface area would be the square units of all these surfaces. And there's a formula that we use for this. It's 2 times b plus p times h. In other words, the base times 2 plus the base perimeter times height. And that makes sense here. If we're going to find all the surfaces, we'd find the two bases. So find the area of one base and multiply that times 2. Then you notice here the perimeter is a plus b plus c, which if you unfolded this prism, it would be a plus b plus c. And then if you multiply that times the height, you notice this looks like a rectangle. So when you multiply that together, that would be the surface area of all three faces. So 2 times the base plus the perimeter times the height. It works the same way with cylinders as well. The bases for a cylinder are circles, so you find the area of the two circles. The perimeter or the circumference is the top of this rectangle of this surface here, the side surface. So here is the side surface all unfolded. It actually looks like a rectangle if you cut it down the middle and unfold it. So it would be the height times the circumference, and that would give you the area of this side part here. So 2 times the base plus the perimeter or the circumference times the height. So here we need to find the surface area of the following prisms. So we can use our formula here, 2 times the base plus the perimeter times the height. So let's find the area of the base, then we can find the perimeter, and then we should be able to solve it with this formula. Let's make this top part here the base, and then the bottom part as well. The area of that base would be the length times the width, so that would be 21. So we'll do b equals 21. The perimeter of that would be 7 times 2, which is 14, plus 3 times 2, which is 6. The p for perimeter, that would be 14 plus 6, which is 20. Now that we have that, we could plug this in. It would be 2 times the base, which would be 2 times 21, plus the perimeter, which is 20, times the height, which is 5. 2 times 21 is 42. 20 times 5 is 100. The total surface area then would be 142, and that's going to be inches squared. It's going to be square inches because we're not finding cubes anymore. We're finding how many squares can fit on the outside of the surface. Now for this triangular prism, we could use that same formula here. It has triangular bases, so let's find the area of this base. It's 8 inches long for the triangle, 3 inches wide. The area of a triangle is length times width, so 3 times 8, which is 24, divided by 2 because it's a triangle. So the base of this triangle is 12 then. The perimeter is the distance around it. So here's the base here. We have 5, 5, and then this part is 8. So 5 plus 5 plus 8, that's going to be 18. So if we plugged it into our formula here, that would be 2 times the base, which is 12, plus the perimeter, which is 18, times the height, which is 7. 2 times 12 is 24, plus 18 times 7 is 126. 24 plus 126 equals 150. So that would be 150 feet squared. Now we can find the surface area of a cylinder using that same formula. 2 times the base plus the perimeter times the height. In this case, perimeter would be circumference because that's the perimeter of a circle is circumference. So since these circles are the bases, we could find the area of that base by doing pi times radius squared. Since the radius is 5, that would be pi times 5 squared. 5 times 5 is 25. 3.14 times 25 is 78.5. So that's the area of the base. The perimeter, remember, is circumference, and circumference is pi times diameter. Since the radius is 5, the diameter would be twice that, so 10. So 3.14 for pi times 10. If we multiply that, we move the decimal over, so that would give us 
4 for the circumference. So if we rewrite this with the base and the circumference, or the perimeter, we would have 2 times 78.5 plus the perimeter, or the circumference, which is 31.4 times the height, which is the distance between the bases, and that's 10. 2 times 78.5 is 157, and then 31.4 times 10, move that decimal over again, that'd be 314. 157 plus 314, that's going to give us 471 for our total surface area. And that's going to be centimeters squared. So that's the surface area of the cylinder, using that same formula. Now we can solve a real world problem. It says a treasure chest is a composite figure. If you were to paint the surface area, how many square feet would you paint? Round your answer to the nearest foot. So composite figures with surface area sometimes make it a little bit more difficult. Because, for example, I see that this is a prism and a cylinder, but this is only half of a cylinder. And this prism, while it has a bottom base, it does not have a top base because it's going to be empty on the top. So if I was going to use my formula, 2 times the base plus the perimeter times the height, I would still do the perimeter times the height because all the faces are still there but I would only need to find the surface area of one base. So we could cross off that 2 and just have B. So let's find the surface area of the prism here. The area of the base is length times width, so 4 times 3. So base equals 12. The perimeter would be 3 times 2, which is 6, plus 4 times 2, which is 8. 6 plus 8 is 14. So the perimeter equals 14. So if we plug those in, that would give us B for 12, so 12 plus P for 14, so 14 times the height, which is 2. 12 plus 28 then, 12 plus 28 gives us 40. So the prism then would equal 40. Now we have this cylinder on top, which is also difficult here. I notice that it's actually only half of a cylinder. What I'm going to do is I'm going to treat it like it's a whole cylinder to find that, and then we can divide that by 2 to get rid of the other half that's missing. So what would the radius of this cylinder be? Well, I see that the total height of this figure is 3.5, and this part of the rectangle is 2. So this takes you to 2. 1.5 more, which would be the radius, would get you to 3.5. Since there's two bases on this one, we can do our formula 2 base times the perimeter times the height. So we'll have a 2 back here. The area of the base would be the area of the circle. The area of a circle is pi times radius squared. 1.5 squared is 2.25. So we have pi times 2.25, which when you multiply 3.14 times 2.25, that gives you 7.065. So that's the area of the base. So you'd say B equals 7.065 for the cylinder. The circumference, on the other hand, when we find the perimeter here, would be the diameter times pi, or pi times diameter. Well, if the radius is 1.5, the diameter all the way down would be 3, so we'd have pi times 3 then. Pi times 3, or 3.14 times 3, is 9.42. So that becomes our circumference. C equals 9.42. So we're still treating this like a full cylinder, so we could plug that formula into here. So 2 times b would be 2 times 7.065 plus the perimeter, which is 9.42, times the height, which is the distance between the bases. That would be 4, so times 4. 2 times 7.065 would give us 14.13. Add 9.42 times 4, that would give us 37.68. If we add these two together, that would give us 51.81. We have now found the surface area of an entire cylinder. Remember, we're only finding half of that. So we need to divide that by 2. 51.81 divided by 2 is 25.905. So the half cylinder part is 25.905.
So if we add the prism and the cylinder together, that gives us 65.905. Remember, we're rounding to the nearest foot, so that would give us 66, and this will be feet squared. So that's how much area you're going to have to paint if you paint that treasure chest.